So far we've got extensive experience on taking the graph of a function, call it f of x, and determining what its marginal and its average is. Now we need to address the inverse operation, which is if you have the average and marginal value of a function, the, the graphs of the average and marginal, but you don't have the function itself, how do you recover the function itself? This is actually more difficult than going in the way we've already discussed. So we're going to start with this average and marginal that I've sketched already. And in the first part of the discussion, we're only going to get information from the marginal. In fact, the marginal is going to give most of the information that we need. Not all. We are going to have to use the average for something. But we'll start with the marginal. I think it's helpful when you're learning this to put an put an arbitrary number on the left-hand axis. It's not going to be taken, you, you can't take it very seriously. It will enable us to get the general shape of the function itself. The, I'll call it f of x. Afterwards, you should forget that you put this arbitrary number here, and exactly where you put it isn't particularly important. I'm going to put the number 1 somewhere on the vertical axis. Uh, let's say maybe I'll put it here. So that's not that the number one really belongs there, but it helps helps me achieve a scale for what I'm going to talk about. Because a marginal value of one would mean that the if the x-axis and y-axis have the same units, that you'd be at a 45 degree line. And if that's a one, then where would Two, roughly 2 would be around here, I suppose. So we're going to pick a few different values of x. And we'll do some more. And see what information we have about the marginal. So the first value of x, I have a marginal value that's around 2, a little bit more than 2. So here, I'm going to sketch a line that has a slope approximately 2. I'm not going to measure, because precise measurements aren't going to be important. The numbers are, are essentially fake numbers anyway. But something like this. And the second point, The marginal has gone up from what it was before, and that means that the line has gotten steeper. So I'll draw a line that's steeper. It's not much deeper. The third point, actually, I don't think is very interesting. I'm going to skip it. The fourth point. Still really doesn't show a lot of change in the marginal, so it's fairly steep. By the time we get to this point, though, the marginal is definitely less than 2. It's greater than 1, but it's less than 2, and so I've become flatter. If I take another point over here, this marginal is now less than 1, and so the function itself is significantly flatter than any of the, the things I've drawn before. So the pattern for this function, starting from the left, is uh, fairly steep, then a little steeper, but then it starts getting flatter. So what I need to do next when graphing the function itself, and I'll switch to black because now I'm graphing the function itself, is to follow this pattern in the graph that's below it. And you notice the graph that's below it doesn't have an x-axis because we don't know where the x-axis is. We don't know the vertical position of the x-axis, in other words, whether it's up high or, 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 or down low. But I can use this, this middle graph I've just shown to get the following sketch. So in the beginning, I've got a slope of about 2. And then over here, over here, I need to be even steeper than that. 
and over here it's about the same steepness. Over here it gets flatter and over here it gets even flatter. So that's the general pattern. Fairly steep, even steeper, and then flatter. If I were to do that again, making it more smooth, fairly steep, even steeper, and then flatter. So that's going to be the general pattern. Having gotten the general pattern, I now need to know where the x-axis is. So we have some choices. The general pattern is steep, then even steeper, and then flatter. So, like that. And I'm going to draw three times. Because it's supposed to be the same shape. I think the third one is uh, sketched a little bit differently. What I don't know is where the x-axis is. I do know the shape. So in other words, you can get the shape of f of x just from the marginal. But I don't know where the x-axis is. And there are three interesting possibilities. The first is that the x-axis is here. The second is that the x-axis is here. And the third is that the x-axis is here. We'll investigate those possibilities in the next lesson.